Even the worst players look insane in this video and that's why today's video is going to show how this tier 9 vehicle plays like a tier 11 when one of the best players in World of Tanks jumps into it. This is going to be some cracked gameplay. Today's video we are of course talking about the KPZ-50T and why this vehicle is on a completely different level to the other tier 9 mediums available within World of Tanks. We're going to see a replay by Beagle here and it is one of the best KPZ replays that I've seen and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy as we move through. We're going to give some really nice analysis of how this tank is going to be one of those vehicles and why it's living up to that title that we have of course given it within this video and why most players hate coming up against this thing not purely based on the fact that it's a very good medium tank but because as a medium tank this thing gets outrageously good armor it gets really good gun handling it gets brilliant mobility and of course when you combine that with the fact that some of the best players in the game decide to play in this thing yeah you blow the competition like the T-54 out of the water at, as a tier 9 medium and you pretty much are a tier 10 medium at this point and yeah hence the title of the video and hopefully if you've experienced something like the KPZ within the game if you've decided to actually either get one or you've been luckily en enough to actually pick up one or however you've managed to come across one of these in the game whether it's from your own gameplay or whether it's because you've come up against them in the game then yeah let me know what you think of the KPZ in the comment section down below because it's really interesting to get your guys's opinion you've been smashing the support you've been smashing all of the things on the channel that you possibly can so uh, yeah I'll be very very interested to see what you guys think but primarily the focus of today's video is looking at how this tank can be one of the most influential tanks in the game and already within this replay there's been about 2000 damage now I'm not saying that every replay in the KPZ you're going to be able to pick up you know 7000 damage 8000 damage but if I had to pick a tank to be able to do that this tank would be one of the highest on my list at tier 9 and that's what makes this thing very very formidable when not only are you getting players deciding to play in a tier 9 vehicle that you know you can meet higher tier vehicles and the pinnacle of the game obviously uh, you want to be in a competitive tank when you're playing up against those tier 10 vehicles and when you're in something like the KPZ you can certainly do that because you have the competitive advantage in a lot of areas over things like heavy tanks at tier 10. You have competitive advantages over some of the medium tanks at tier 10. In With regards to your armor model, you can bounce tier 10s in this thing. Granted that you're probably not going to want to rely on being able to bounce things because, you know, you do have quite a big lower plate. People can hit you in that lower plate. But, you know, it's one of those things you just have to accept. But you're seeing here uh, the accuracy, the reload as well coming in quite nicely. And with the 320 alpha damage that you get with the KPZ, you can be very, very consistent. You can see here popping up in the central position, very influential at the beginning of the game. This position often used by a lot of the light tanks in the game, things like the Barask as well, the mediums that have uh, the kind of broken view range and pretty much all of the broken tanks in the game and that's really where the kpz is using it to his advantage because this tank has okay camo too so you're able to remain undetected you are able to uh, spot opponents you can see max view range uh, as you'd probably expect from a tier 9 medium and that's allowing him to basically plop rounds into this enemy Emil 2 who for some reason keeps poking out around the corner like he's a single shot. Not entirely sure what he was intending to do uh, but of course he's been punished massively and that's why our player here Beagle has picked up nearly 3000 damage and that is just the damage that has been done when the opponents have been spotted and in in essence the tank has also done an extra 400 assistance damage as well so combine that all together you end up with a very good result straight away and within five minutes of the game opening but don't worry because this game goes from being you know a fairly consistent damage game that you would expect in a tank like this to holy crap they've somehow managed to pull out a win out of thin air 
And that's really where the KPZ uh, is going to be outstanding in this gameplay. Now, there is 12,882 damage left on the enemy team. So you might be thinking, oh, well, the maximum damage he could possibly do in this game if he was to get every single drop on the enemy team would be uh, roughly uh, 15,000 damage. So you would have to, from this point onwards, be predominantly uh, taking out two thirds of the enemy team just to hit that 10k damage mark. And that is not two thirds of the enemy team, but two thirds of the enemy team's hit points. So you'd have to come out with some ridiculous way of farming up the opponents. Obviously, you're seeing here the Emil 2 deciding he's going to blind fire um, or at least trying to hit this KPZ that's been bullying him all game. And unfortunately for him, he does indeed get tracked and he's now sat out in the open ready to be packed lunch for the 60 TP and the 60 TP doesn't even manage to hit him and now he's being punished and the Emil 2 once again trying to push forward trying to hide behind the 60 TP I'm not that surprised he decides he's going to load a heat round for the Emil and yes goodbye Emil 2 picking up an extra 1500 damage in the last kind of 20 to 30 seconds of us talking so very very nice result but of course Still kind of limited on how much damage you can get, even with a result like this. But don't worry, because our player here knows exactly what he needs to do. He has been playing World of Tanks for a consistent amount of time. And he's also managed to already pick up a decent chunk of uh, marks on the KPZ. And by a decent chunk, I mean three. So very, very nice to see. And of course, you can see him just bullying the Waffle Panzer IV. You could see there a bounce from the Waffle Panzer IV and it just makes you laugh because remember the Waffle has very very good pen for the majority of time and it reloads pretty quickly and when you're playing up against something like this you'd be expecting you know the Waffle is going to demolish you but unfortunately for the Waffle he only reloaded once and when you start firing the HE rounds that you saw yeah, you can really boost up that damage even more, going from 320 alpha with the standard rounds or premium rounds to 420 alpha with the HE rounds. And remember, because it's a German vehicle, you do get this uh, kind of decent shell velocity for a HE round. It's uh, 1,173 meters a second, which is similar to what you'd see from most AP rounds. The only negative is that you only have 53 millimeters of penetration. So you're not going to be able to be that consistent with uh, being able to pen things. I mean, tier 10 heavies are going to be very much a, uh, a hard thing to pen unless you were to get the back end of them and you just kept them locked down. Now, one thing that you're seeing here, the IS-7 obviously coming out a little bit too far. She didn't realise that the KPZ is just going to sit here. And this is exactly what the KPZ is all about. Just locking people down. The IS-7 doesn't really have an option other than to sit there and just take it. Unless he, of course, gets his repair pack kit back. But you're seeing now some more rounds going in. Unfortunately, the IS-7 has indeed moved at this point, but he doesn't know where and this is really where the KPZ can now go off in. The team are most likely going to win. There's 6,600 hit points on his team, 3,400 on the enemy team. So they would have to throw it quite massively at this point to be able to lose. But having done 7,000 damage, well, 7,300 nearly, uh, he's now looking for the final remaining shells on the opponents before the game ends. And you're seeing a lot of his team actually camping and Considering that they're camping, you may be able to capitalize on it. Can he possibly reach the 8,000 damage mark before the game ends? Well, I don't know. I guess that that's why this is on the channel. And you can see here VZ on pretty much a one shot. You're seeing the Griller playing a little bit passive. Of course, the Griller is also a one shot. The VZ on the enemy team or the opposite VZ is now also pushing towards the Griller. Uh, there are very deadly vehicles on the enemy team. So the IS-7, obviously quite a consistent damage dealer in the game, it has fairly consistent reload, allowing them to basically punish you quite a lot. You've also then got the 257, which is just a pain in the arse to be able to reliably pen if you kind of catch him off guard or you're caught off guard. And luckily, uh, the player here, uh, Beagle, does manage to catch the object 257 
off guard and he's not looking in the right direction but this is where the arm model of the KPZ can come in quite clutch. You're seeing him just poking the 257. He was using the third person view to be able to uh, sh uh, kind of view around the corner as you always should do in World of Tanks if you're trying to decide upon whether to come around that corner, whether you need to do something else or if you have to go a different way. And unfortunately, the I-7 does manage to catch the KPZ in the side, which is not ideal. But at this point, he's going to go towards the VZ because... Once the VZ's out of the game, that's basically a thousand hit points of health that he could potentially lose if he doesn't look the right way. So getting him out of the game, securing that damage, and of course removing one of the most dangerous tanks on the enemy team at this point is going to be what you want to do. And of course, being a player that isn't completely um, a bot in the game, then that's exactly what he's aiming to do. So pulls right the way back. He would have been quite out on a limb over there if he had got spotted and that wouldn't have been ideal against two VZs that could pull up, an IS-7 that could just pull up and of course a 257 that could also just pull up and you never know if they're all kind of being synergistic together so whether they're all coming at once, if they've actually communicated with one another and you are in a tier 9 vehicle, not a tier 10 even though this vehicle might as well be. But... Having done 7,900 damage, I, at this point, personally, would be shitting myself about the fact that what the enemy team are going to do next. Are they going to YOLO? Are they going to come forward? What are they going to do? Oh, and the nightmare. Doesn't manage to pen the VZ. It was a very lucky shot to even hit, but it would have been nice to take him out of the game. But you can see here, playing up uh, aggressively, I guess, trying to find out where the VZs are shutting them down and of course trying to find this angle on the 257. Now the enemy VZ does get spotted and he indeed gets spotted as a result as well. Places one nice one into the IS-7 as you should be doing. This tank is very good if you have uh, awareness, if you are an aware player within World of Tanks, if you know which direction you should be aiming in, if you know what sort of direction you think the opponents are going to come from then having that alpha damage and having the accuracy and of course the mobility is really just an added benefit to this vehicle and allows you to take advantage of that now the vz on the enemy team is pinning down the t30 and at this point he's just trying to secure that kind of easy damage on the back of the vz and oh bollocks, he manages to miss the back of the VZ and now the VZ has finished off his teammate but can he hit him this last time? Yes he can, the VZ on the enemy team now poking out or appears to be but very very scared, I would be scared as well if I was a one shot against the KPZ and of course he does manage to actually hit the VZ which is lovely and now it's just an IS-7 and an object 257 and you'll actually have noticed that he's easily surpassed the 8000 damage mark but can he surpass the 9000 damage mark? No is the answer as the IS-7 somehow manages to mysteriously Soviet bounce off the side of him the object 257 actually manages to bounce off the side of the KPZ which is very very nice and at this point now progressing towards the 257 the enemy team are at a significant disadvantage KPZ can take one hit from the 257 so he's fully aiming 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 hits the 257 and now it's a case of can the 257 get behind the corner before he is taken out and the answer to that question is absolutely not and within this replay He's managed to pick up 9,350 damage, which is insane in itself. But we'll check and take a look at the full stats at the end of the video if you want to have a look at those. But let's jump into the next replay before this video ends. So the next replay that we have is when you take a tier 11 vehicle, shove it down at tier 9 and then say... Oh, you can play tier 7s and of course this is a top tier replay where we're seeing the KPZ up against the lowest tier opponents that you can see and a lot of them in fact in this game coming up against things like the AMX M445, the IS, the Tiger and the T43 and Super Hellcat all of which 
how basically a giant magnet for the KPZ to come and eat. So that is exactly what we're going to see in this replay where the KPZ showcases itself in the utmost ability against some of these tier 7 vehicles and you can see they're very nice to be able to hit on the move with this tank as you don't have unlike the most insane accuracy but you do have German accuracy to the point where you can be very very consistent and compare it to a lot of the other tier 9 mediums you have very good accuracy so that allows you to do things that a lot of the others wouldn't be able to do and why you're able to hit the J Panther over a ridge line twice in a row and three times in a row lovely the J Panther 2 of course a vehicle that you don't want to get hit by because uh, it may not be the most overpowered tier 8 tank destroyer in the game but what it does have is that 490 alpha which can remove your hit points very quickly and at a rate at which you don't want to be taking now ramming in to the super hellcat finishing them off and of course that is exactly what the kpz 50t can do because it is fast it has good armor and it's heavy so not only do you get good gun handling not only do you get a good gun not only do you get armor not only can you meet tier 7s in a tier 11 vehicle and not only do you get a good penetration yeah you can also ram things so it makes this tank one of the best tier 9s in the game if not the best tier 9 in the game that you could probably see and if you compare it like some of the other top tier kind of content creators in World of Tanks have done things like uh, Kaizu where they've compared it to the Chieftain I guess at tier 9 and I kind of see the the comparison because it has kind of very good at pretty much doing everything that you could possibly want in World of Tanks and why you're able to do things like this. Uh, crawl up flanks on your own, pretty much dominate the flanks, don't really have to care about tier 7 vehicles at all, they're never going to be able to do anything and that's why some of the worst players in World of Tanks can still come out with uh, supremely good games uh, if you were to compare them to some of the other vehicles you can play at tier 9. And where you'll see this tank come in the top level of world of tanks is where these the best players in the game not only play this vehicle but they get adjusted to it to the point where they know uh, a little bit about the vehicle obviously by playing a decent chunk in the vehicle they'll soon learn how to auto ricochet a lot of rounds because of that sloped frontal hull armor that is also kind of rounded at the same time which can mean uh, typical side scraping can be a bit of a pain so it's not just a complete flat upper plate you also have that kind of rounded dome shape upper plate which makes it annoying for some people maybe they're not aiming where they'd expect to have to aim and so uh, as a player that's trying to utilize this tank to the best of your ability you'd hopefully be aiming uh, to try and avoid anyone being able to do that now the french tier 9 autoloaders on the enemy team both the char future and of course uh, the <laughs> and of course the batch at 25 tap all thinking that they're good enough to rival a kpz let's just say they're not whatsoever able to rival a kpz and you can see here the other auto loading tier 9 vehicle the skoda t50 decides he's also going to follow in the footsteps or footsteps of his <laughs> of his little rat players on his team and of course he gets sent back to the garage with them as well so they can all enjoy their time sitting back in the garage having fed this kpz a ton of damage and this is really where the kpz just dominates because you saw there a tier 11 against three tier nines and they didn't even really have a chance i mean especially when you can kind of get this thing hold down if you can if you can get it working if you keep it mo moving as well because of the fact that this tank is fast and players like the super pershing just will struggle entirely and you can see here the player deciding that you know the super purging isn't really a threat to be honest and he just keeps marching forward it doesn't matter if he bounces he doesn't need to stop to aim because his aim is to not have to worry about the super purging because he's going to take him out either way when he gets behind him and then what he can do is he can get closer to the damage that he can farm up as you're seeing here against the back of a lot of these vehicles the object 257 the other tier 9 in the game and of course pushing his way towards the remainder of the tier 7 and 8 vehicles since all of the tier 9 vehicles are 
pretty much been taken out by the 257 who is now on a very much a one shot. Now he's going for the pure damage in this game, not wanting to farm up a tiger that's on a little bit of hit points, although the tiger does manage to actually hit him, um, it does bounce uh, as with pretty much every tier 7 in the game that you can find. The TNH does manage to Amarak him though and that's a bit of a problem since the repair kit's on cooldown and you have to now wait kind of ruining the last bit of the game since he probably could have farmed up both the TNH and the remaining tank before his team arrive but maybe he'll get one more in and he does lovely lovely result to see 9,617 damage with 1,500 assistance bringing the grand total over 10,000 combined damage and not even just slightly 11,000 combined damage to be exact so yeah, what a result in the KPZ and definitely showcasing both in the first replay against the tier 10s and of course in this against tier 7s. So you can see in all ranges of the matchmaker, this thing is dominant. Now let's jump over to the result screen for both of the battles and if you're not interested in that I highly recommend you skip ahead to the end of the video and you'll see two new videos that showcase two different tanks that this one can also compete with as a tier 11. So what does dealing the most damage in a tier 10 game look like? Well, of course, having dealt 10,375 damage and 7 kills, you get 2,023 base experience, which means that this game is one of the highest of all time during patch 1.19 for World of Tanks, meaning that yes, this tank is absolutely outrageous. Not only did he pick up the Mastery, the Bruiser, the Duelist, Fire for Effect, but the Oskins Medal, the High Calibre and the Top Gun, and of course did probably nearly enough the same amount of damage as the majority of his team that did actually do any substantial amount of damage. So really, really good result. And of course, shutting down both the VZs on the enemy team and that 257 from a considerable amount of health. So yes, a really good result in the Paris map. But what about the other map where you see tier sevens? Well, here it is. The victory, of course, picking up 277,000 silver, a mastery badge, a hand of God spotter, bruiser, duelist, fighter, fire for effect, tanker, sniper, confederate and high caliber, not managing to pick up the top gun, but overall 9,948 damage, not quite breaking the 10k mark, but still picking up 1,993 base experience in this Dracer. The Toxic Gamer, of course, coming away with a brilliant result. And as such, picking up 177,000 silver as well. And a ridiculous overall combined damage of 11,000. So, yes, thank you both for uploading these to the What Replay site. I highly recommend you guys go and check them out for yourselves if you want to. But if you don't, then hopefully you'll join me in some new gameplays on screen right now. And I'll see you there. Goodbye.